What is going on everybody? It is Ramp with Ramsky Gaming and I am bringing you a comprehensive Xbox One controller setup guide for iRacing. So if you are in any way apprehensive about trying iRacing because you only have a controller and you don't have access to a wheel, or if you want to just find out if you like the game, this is the guide for you. Stick around, check it out. Alright, so I know a lot of you are probably saying, Ramp, don't you have a wheel? What are you doing making controller settings videos for iRacing? That's a great question, guys. I've been wondering that myself. But sometimes I'm feeling lazy, I want to learn a track, and I want to do it from my couch. I don't feel like getting onto my wheel and, you know, getting all set up, getting the VR on, all that, all that jazz. There are dozens of us. Dozens! So I went on a bit of a crusade and set out to find uh, some viable controller settings for an Xbox One controller on iRacing. So let's get right into it. A fresh install of iRacing, how you would configure your controller. All right, so now that we are in the game, we are going to go to configure controls, turn the wheel fully one way and then the other. So on the joystick, you will simply move the left joystick all the way to the left and then all the way to the right and then let it center hit done to measure your wheels range turn your wheel 90 degrees to the left we don't have to do this we're going to simply check device is a joystick slash gamepad done return the wheel to its center position which it always already is it's done Throttle set up, depress the throttle fully and release it. Right trigger. Depress the brake fully and release it. The left trigger. Done. Now for clutch setup, make sure that you use auto clutch or auto blip if you do not want to blip your gas when you downshift. And hit done. Activate a button, key, or access for upshifting. I like to do B button on the Xbox One controller. And for downshifting, I like doing the A button. Do we have an H pattern shifter? No. Look left, uh, left on the D-pad. Look right, right on the D-pad. Enter, exit, tow car. I like to make that the start button on the controller. And hit done. Now, the main thing that you want to change here is move this map range to about 250, I would say, somewhere around that ballpark. And that's going to give your wheel a little bit more turning without being too reckless. You don't want it to look like this when you're driving. So we have our controller up there. And the real key to this is to, if you look at the controller diagram, is you want to keep your joystick on the top right your hand and your thumb might get a little tired so if you let go it will just center the wheel so on straights and stuff you just want to let go but when you're turning keep that joystick up at the top of the controller and use that to kind of smooth your turns out and that's really the, the main trick to it uh, now we're gonna get into some of the force feedback kind of stuff and by that I mean the vibrations on the controller and this is where this is gonna change things for most guides that you see and we wanted the controller to vibrate when you're losing control and traction on your tires and by default in iRacing with a controller for some reason the vibrations on my Xbox One controller are consistent all the way from when I leave the pit and it doesn't matter if I'm sliding, if my wheels are losing traction or anything, but it will constantly vibrate. There's no variation in the vibration. It just feels very strange. Um, and it's offering no actual feedback to my driving whatsoever, what the car's doing. And I wanted to change it merely to give me vibration only when the cars lose traction in the wheels or if I lock up my brakes. That's the only time I want to feel vibration because then at least it's actually telling me something that the car is doing and I can use that information to, you know, uh, correct my steering or whatever it may be. And that's what we're going to change next. All right, so now that you're back on your desktop, you will simply go to your documents folder, 
then go to documents like I said iRacing and you will go to this app file if you can't open it right click it and open with notepad scroll all the way down to force feedback it is right here and you will scroll to where you see joy enable vibrate all x input with pedal now the standard setting for this is zero um, after messing around with this for so long if you only plan to use a controller I would mimic the settings that I'm going to do right here and you will only feel the vibrations when your car loses traction or loses uh, when your wheels start to slide or lock up you'll hear or you'll feel the vibration and it'll give you better knowledge of how the car is behaving while you're driving it so I changed this setting to one and I'll put this down in the comments as well I use I keep this one on one this vibrate pedal binary I changed to one and then enable vibrate throttle with pedal I changed to zero enable vibrate wheel with pedal I also change to zero and that's pretty much it you will simply file save and close it out go back into the session all right so we are now back in the game we are going to figure out if the vibration only happens when we lose traction in the wheels or lock up the brakes and let's give that a shot right now Yep, working perfectly. So the vibration is only happening when we are losing traction of the car. And that is going to help you out a lot, I believe, as a controller user. Now, the last tip is more involving a faster cars um, like the GT3 or uh, even maybe the Radical or the rough GT3 Porsche GT3 Cup. And this trick is going to help you not lock your brakes up with the controller as it is pretty easy, pretty easy to do in the faster vehicles in this game. Okay, so you lock up pretty easily in some of these faster cars. So the way to fix that is to simply go to your options, check use custom controls for this car, hit done. And then you'll exit the game and you'll go to your iRacing folder in My Documents. So Documents iRacing and then Setups. And in this case, the rough ET3 car. You open this Joy Calib file with Notepad and you simply add. We want to add about 20% more throw on the brake pedal than it actually has so we help not lock ourselves up so we're gonna add about 20 percent which is 50 we're gonna do 305 here and this is under axis 5 simply save it close it load back into your iRacing session and you can do this with any car. Basically, you're, when, you, when you max out on the brake pedal, there's gonna be like a dead zone, so you're not braking all the way, and that's gonna help you not lock your car up. And like I said, people do this with the pedals, um, certain pedals, even I've seen people do it with load cell pedals, but it's especially essential with a controller. Already it's not as touchy and twitchy as it felt before, it's definitely a little harder to lock up the brakes and this is on a per car basis you can add more to the amount so we added about 20 percent you could add 30 percent or you could add less depending on how much you lock up or how little you lock up in the vehicle but you will have to adjust every car individually when you check that box that says use custom controls for that car 
but I would recommend this tremendously to those of you who are uh, you know, a little bit hesitant to use some of the faster cars in the game with a controller, of course. Alright, so what are my thoughts on using a controller in iRacing? Is it viable? Absolutely. If you spend enough time working with these settings, I think that you could end up being pretty fast and consistent. Am I personally fast or as fast as I am with a wheel? Um, no, I'm definitely not, but I haven't put a super amount of time into it, maybe a few days. Uh, this quarantine has got me pretty bored, so I've been probably spending too much time on this, I guess. But I was curious and I thought maybe it could help some people out. So. If you guys found this helpful and you liked it, please leave a like, please comment, subscribe. I really appreciate any kind of feedback and um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.